my name is Steve Hillis and this is the first video uh, of a series of videos we're going to have on criminology, criminology theories, and so forth. This video is for my intro sociology class, Social 100, and also for my social problems class, Social 220 at Purdue University. We're going to start off talking about America as the land of the prison, incarceration nation. Before we actually get into actual numbers, how many Americans are in the criminal justice system in jail and so forth, let's take a little bit uh, a look at what we call the crime funnel here to point out a little bit about the relationship between the sheer number of crimes we have and the number of people sent to jail. Now, the point we're trying to make here, frankly, is, is that we have lots of crime. And actually, sadly, most people get by with crime most of the time. Most criminals get away with their criminal acts, although, if they keep it up, Presumably, the vast majority do at some point wind up in jail. These are old numbers from 2006 from the National Institute of Justice. And uh, we have uh, felonies, according to their estimates, that uh, during that period, felonies committed annually about 42 million. But large numbers of those felonies were never reported to the police. So uh, something like 12 million felonies were actually reported to the police, serious crimes. And of the 12 million, there were 6 million felony arrests. So we've already gone from 42 million estimated felonies to 6 million felony arrests. Those 6 million felony arrests would yield less than a million convictions, 915,000. And then if you look at the number of people sent to prison annually, it was just a drop in the bucket, 420,000. You start out with 42 million felonies, not 42 million criminals, mind you, but 42 million serious crimes, and you wind up with about 420,000 people being sent to jail during, a, uh, during that period, during each year. Now, uh, we want to point out here that clearance rates uh, vary tremendously by crime. Some crimes are solved at fairly high rates, while other crimes uh, uh, typically uh, are not solved, or at least not uh, solved in most cases. If you look at some crimes like murder, one of our most serious crimes obviously, uh, most murders today are solved. Uh, according to these estimates from 2005, uh, a little under two-thirds of all murders would result in an arrest. Now that percentage is way down since the 1950s. In the good old days, you might find something closer to 90% or above of uh, all murders would eventually result in an arrest. Today that number is down for a whole variety of reasons. But even today, most murders do result in an arrest. The cases are clear. For aggravated assaults, the numbers are a little lower. It's still over half, about 55%. But still, you can clearly see aggravated assaults. A lot of them are never uh, result in an arrest. And by the way, I want to emphasize that these are aggravated assaults reported to the police. There are a lot of aggravated assaults that are never reported to the police. So the actual number of aggravated assaults that are either unreported or do not result in an arrest are far higher. Again, this is 55% roughly of the aggravated assaults which are reported to police. Forcible rape, the clearance rate is even lower for those rapes that are reported. And rape does appear to be heavily underreported. Lots of rapes never are reported to police. But for those that are, a little over 40% will wind up in an arrest. For robbery, uh, for reported robberies, it's close to 25%, 25.4%, even less for larceny theft, 18%, motor vehicle theft, 13%, and finally burglary, all the way down to 12.7%. Well, the punchline here is, is that most criminals get by with their criminal acts more times than not, and that's especially true for some crimes. But in spite of that, we arrest so many people, convict them, and incarcerate them that, well, it boggles the mind. We've been arresting and convicting and incarcerating people more and more over time. Here we have state and federal prison populations from 1925 to 2010. And you can see that they remain fairly stable from uh, 1925 all the way up into the uh, late 60s, early 70s. And then, during the 70s, especially the 80s, 90s, and 2000s, this was an explosion in prison populations. Well, 
Uh, this was no accident. Presumably it had a lot to do with the war on drugs. It also had to do with some new policies like three strike policies where people with criminal histories, with felony records, if they committed yet another crime, a lot of them were sent for much longer prison sentences. The result was as prison populations grew for those reasons and for others. And by the way, it wasn't just prison populations. Every part of the criminal justice system, uh, parole, jail, prison, probation, uh, just people involved at one stage or another of the criminal justice system exploded during this period. And you can see that in this graph from 1980 to 2010, the total population under supervision of the adult correctional system. And you can see this huge explosion. Um, the rise of mass punishment. Uh, is the United States alone in these trends? Well, yes and no. Many other countries have experienced increasing incarceration rates in the past few decades. The United States is hardly alone. And they point out some examples here, England, Australia, Brazil, South Africa. Um, so we're hardly alone seeing our prison populations grow rapidly. But clearly the United States has prison populations that simply dwarf most others both in absolute numbers, but also in population-adjusted numbers, prison rates, incarceration rates, that make us more comparable to places like, well, Russia, than they do to most of the industrialized world, or even much of the third world. In order to make that point, let's quickly glance at some of the, uh, let's quickly glance at U.S. incarceration in context of incarceration rates in other countries. And here we show that the U.S. incarceration, uh, the U.S. incarcerates the largest number of people uh, per 100,000 uh, in the world. Some countries have very low incarceration rates, and here we see countries like Nepal, Nigeria, India, Indonesia, Pakistan, and Iraq with extremely low uh, incarceration rates of well under 100 people in jail for every 100,000 people in the population. You'll also notice on this little illustration lots of industrialized countries beginning to pop up, Germany, Italy, Australia, uh, Spain down here. Uh, frankly, most industrialized countries also have moderately low incarceration rates. As we move the chart up and up, incarceration rates are rising. I have to ship this over because the bars are getting longer, meaning higher incarceration rates. And at the very bottom of the chart, we have the United States of America incarcerating 738 people per 100,000. These numbers, again, are from the mid-2000s. Notice that compares uh, most closely with the Russian Federation. Uh, also, fairly similarly, but are at a higher rate than Cuba, the Ukraine, Singapore, Botswana, South Africa. These are countries that have uh, reputations as being stern on crime, and many of them have reputations of being authoritarian regimes. Certainly not uh, kind of enlightened, uh, democratic, liberal uh, kinds of social orders. Uh, on the other hand, if you look at, let's see here, if we can find a good example, yeah, Japan. Japan, big, industrialized, powerful, wealthy country. 62 people per 100,000 people in their population are in jail. To remind you, in the U U.S., it's well over 10 times as high, 738. To put this in some kind of context where you can just kind of glance at pictures, uh, well, this kind of does it. It's not the greatest illustration, but you can kind of just glance at it and see that the U.S. has a whole lot more little people in here, little stick figures, and uh, we have incarceration rates in this case uh, expressed in a little different form. But clearly you can see that the U.S. has much higher incarceration rates than someplace like China or Canada. Uh, we're more similar to countries like uh, South Africa and Russia. Well, that ends our presentation. Next time around, we're going to talk about a different topic. We're going to talk about crime trends and patterns. We will catch you then. Thank you very much.